today we're going to uh, go through a technique for memorizing the periodic table. And the way I do it is I, I construct mnemonics. I, I take the different groups in the periodic table and I make words out of them. There are 18 groups in the periodic table. They go from 1 to 18 all the way across. So this would be group 1, group 2, 3 through 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. A lot of the groups have names. This is called the alkali metals. And uh, alkali metals will take on a charge of plus one, typically when they form ions, because they lose that S electron to become P6, like all stable configurations. Uh, P6 is one of the favored ones because it re resembles the noble gas configuration. The uh, alkali metals are memorized by saying H, linac, rubidium, cesium, francium. I know it's not a very good mnemonic. I'm only actually making a mnemonic out of this part, but that's what works for me. H, linac, rubidium, cesium, francium. Group two is called the alkaline earth metals. They typically will form a plus two charge, and I like to write it down here when they form ions. They'll lose two of their S electrons uh, to give you a P6 configuration. To memorize them, Bemka Cerbera. Bemka Cerbera. Take a word out of the letters representing the, uh, the symbols of the elements. Group three is sky layak. Uh, it doesn't have a name, but I memorized sky layak because lanthanum and actinium, actinium represent the first in the series uh, of elements that is followed by the F block. The F block is, represents the filling of the F shell in the electron configuration. Uh, so you'll notice also that the atomic numbers break at this point. It goes from 57 to 72 and 89 to 104. All the intervening numbers appear in F block. So you see 57, count through all the way to the end of F block. And then it continues at 72 with hafnium uh, all the way across. Uh, so then we, this whole section is called the transition elements. And the reason they're called transition elements is because many of their properties are um, variable. They have, some of them will have multiple uh, oxidation states. For example, iron will take on a plus two or sometimes will take on a plus three charge. We call it ferrous or ferric. Uh, cobalt will do the same thing, cobaltus or cobaltic. And that's where we, we have the transition of elements. A lot of, they form a lot of polyatomic ions where they're the central atom. Uh, for example, permanganate and a lot of oxygen-based um, polyatomic ions because they have those multiple oxidation states. Interestingly, there's one element here which is a metal, but it's still capable of a negative charge. Normally, metals will only take on positive charges that will only lose electrons, while rhenium is capable of having a negative oxidation state, and that's very interesting. Um, group 13 is called the boron group, and you memorize that by saying bal gainto. Bal gainto, so you make a word out of the first two, bal, and then gainto, B-A-I-N-T-L. And they take on typically a negative, uh, sorry, a plus three charge. The next group is called the carbon group, Group 14, carbon, silicon, gesenhub. Make a word out of the last three elements. Carbon, silicon, gesenhub. Group uh, 15 is the nitrogen group. We say napasb. Napasb b. It's a way to memorize that one. Ossetepo for group 16. It's called the chalcogens. They take on a negative 2 charge. Oh, by the way, the group 15 will take on a negative 3 charge. The halogens are FCL bryac, and the chalcogens are osteotepal. Halogens will take on a negative one charge. And finally, noble gases don't take on a charge, no one, they don't form ions because they have that stable P6 configuration. And the way you memorize the noble gases is heen archer zern. Heen archer zern. The other thing I teach my students to do is to memorize the table from left to right because I actually demand them to write the whole table from, uh, from memory. And if you memorize it in two directions, then the, the, the grid will work its way out. So what I do is I make a constructor work going from left to right. I read the paragraph from left to right. And that will also tell you, you could, you could figure out what the atomic number is of the element simply by writing them in order. So the word, the mnemonic is he for the first period. Libebkinov. Ni, I like to actually stick it all together. Helibebkinov, Nina, gets, gets us all the way up to sodium. So Helibebkinov, Nina, Magalsipskov, 
Ellie Bevkinoff, Nina Miguel Slip School, R. Kask, Tiv Kerr, Manfico, Nykusen, Mejas, Berker. So that brings, all the, that brings you all the way up to 36. And what's nice about this technique is that you've memorized it this way. So when you memorize it from left to right as well, it's nice to get uh, the, the fact that it corroborates in both directions. So let's, to recap, Heli Bebkinov, Nina Miguel Sipsko, Arkask, Tiv Kerr, Menfico, Nykusen, Gejas, Berker, Herb Sreezer, Matruer, Padai, Kedin, Sensib, Tegster. Sisbala, Haftar, Rios, Herb, Ahog. I could stop it there because we have it all the way up down here. And the only thing, the only extra thing I would ask you to memorize to make it to make sure everything lines up is ferruos. And the reason I say ferruos here with iron, ruthenium, and osmium is because we have rhenium, ruthenium, and rhodium all in the same place on the periodic table. So if you if you say ferruos, you know that Ru is in the middle. And then uh, if you'd like, you can even add corier to make sure that rhodium appears below cobalt. The last line does not appear. Uh, fully completed here, but we have names now all the way up to this box. So you could draw in these boxes if your table doesn't have them. And the mnemonic here is Freyak Rif Div Sig Ba Has Mat Dis Rig Kun. So you would say Frey Ak Rif Div Sig Ba Has Mud, this, rig, and then copernicium is the last one. Okay, copernicium, CN, would bring you up to 100 and see, 16, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112. So copernicium is the last element with a name by, by international consensus. Uh, they're still working on it. I think there may be some other elements here that have already been discovered, or at least their existence has been proven, but they still have those three-letter names that you see on some periodic tables, like uniquadium for 104. Well, uniquadium is just Latin for 104. They give it a number because they, have, they haven't decided yet what the name is. When you look at the periodic table, you'll notice that these numbers correspond to the number of protons in the nucleus. And if it's a neutral atom, it'll also correspond to the number of electrons in the atom. So lithium, for example, has three protons, and a, a neutral lithium atom will also have three electrons. If lithium forms a charged uh, particle, it'll be Li+, plus, and Li+, plus will give you 1s2. Uh, it's normally 2s1 when it's, when it's uh, not charged, but if you have lithium plus 1, it loses that s electron, and it becomes 1s2. What else do we have to know? The whole left side of the periodic table is the metals. It's all metals. From here to here we have metals. Hydrogen is the only one that's not a metal. It's a gas. Although some scientists have uh, theorized that if you put enough pressure on hydrogen, it too can behave like a metal. Uh, on the right side of the periodic table, we have the non-metals. And on this stair step, which starts by going down, so when you draw your stair, you uh, go like that, you have what are called the metalloids. Everything sitting on the step and everything touching the bottom of the step is a metalloid, except for aluminum and polonium. So you can think of alpo. Alpo are the two uh, elements touching the stair from the bottom that are actually metals, they're not metalloids. Uh, the whole section here I think I mentioned already is called the transition metals. You also have the blocks. These two sets of squares are called S block. From here, from, uh, from 3 to 12 is called D block. From 13 to 18 is called P block, and this is called F block. And the reason they're called these different block names is because they represent the filling of electron shells. These atoms end in S, so these are all S1. These are all S2. These are all D1. These are all D10. And in between, you get a little bit of uh, uh, anomalies happening. A few anomalies occur because sometimes a half-filled shell is more stable than a, a, built, uh, than a partially filled shell. So the coinage metals are known to do a little bit, uh, some strange things on the 
on the shelf building. Uh, in P block, all these are P1, all these are P6. So you see the pattern, they go from P1 to P6. And uh, here you'll find F1, although there are some, there are a lot of exceptions in F block, so I'm not going to say definitively that they're F1, 2, 3. It doesn't necessarily follow the pattern always. But suffice it to say that the F shell is filling here of the, um, the, the shell filling of the electron pattern around the atom. So this is the periodic table of the elements, and it helps us to um, make judgments about the electronegativity of the atoms. It, makes us, it helps us to predict what the ionization potential of the atoms will be. Typically, metals give up electrons more easily. So things that you find on the left side of the period, periodic table will give up electrons more easily than things that you find on the right-hand side of the periodic table. The most electronegative element is fluorine. So the top right is where you'll find the most electronegative elements. And oxygen and chlorine are also quite electronegative. Um, electron affinities tend to increase from left to right and from bottom to top. So the most uh, highest electron affinities will be found in uh, around fluorine. Uh, the ionization potentials tend to be the lowest among the metals. And the bigger the metal, the easier it is to take a valence electron from it. So the most easily ionized atom will likely be francium. Well, if you could find francium, but it's too radioactive. So the most electronegative element you can see in nature would be cesium. You'll notice that uh, on the periodic table we have here, these are written in red. It's because they're gases. The diatomic elements form a, 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 a number seven shape on the right-hand side of the periodic table. So nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine, if you could find any on the Earth, would be diatomic. Hydrogen is also diatomic. You use the mnemonic Hoff Brinkle. A lot of people use that as well. But it's nice to know that it occurs right here. This is where you find the diatomic elements. And um, there's one other thing I want to mention is atomic radius. The atoms tend to get smaller as you go from left to right. So they get smaller. The small, they're, they're small because the atomic number is increasing and pulling the electrons closer and closer to the center of the atom. But when you start a new shell, then you're, having a, you're, you're starting a new orbital, a new principal quantum number, so it's, it's, the shell is farther away from the atom. So the atoms are big, and then they get smaller. They also tend to get bigger as you go down, because the atom is obviously within one group. The atom has more and more electrons to, to pile around the nucleus, so naturally you have to open new shells to do that. So the atoms get bigger as you go down, but they get smaller as you go uh, left to right. Okay, we'll stop there.